This is one of the valleys of the earth as it may have looked 50,000 years ago. But this was not to be like other days. For high above, in outer space, a meteor as large as the top of a mountain was hurtling toward the earth. meteor that desolated the valley scattered millions of its blackened parts around the edges of the gigantic crater. Ages of healing time passed. Trees again sheltered the earth. Green grass once more blanketed the quiet land. Then, on a day lost in antiquity, primitive man discovered fragments of the meteor. Black stuff, different from all the other rocks of the valley. Man the hunter shaped the material into a spear point, which gave him the hardest and sharpest weapon he had ever known. The material that had fallen from outer space was so precious that man called it metal from heaven. But meteoric iron was scarce, and for thousands of years, most implements and weapons were made of stone and wood. With the passing years, man invented the wheel and learned how to write. He developed a system of arithmetic and discovered how to fashion copper, bronze, and gold into things of beauty. It was in Asia Minor, around 1400 BC, that metal workers learned to smelt a mixture of reddish earth and charcoal to produce iron. Man's progress no longer depended on the metal from heaven. The Iron Age was born. The technique of smelting iron spread rapidly throughout the ancient world. Man, the toolmaker, fashioned iron axes to cut and shape wood. He made iron-tipped plowshares to furrow the soil. And iron sides to reap the grain. Ancient writings report that in 1200 BC, the armies of Egypt used iron weapons against their enemies. Biblical scrolls mention that about 1000 BC, iron nails were used in the building of a temple. But according to Herodotus, the Greek historian, it was not until about 500 BC that man learned how to change iron into something infinitely better. History tells us the momentous discovery was made in India. Iron ore and charcoal were heated in small crucibles. When the mass congealed, it was reheated. Then it was hammered. 
reheated and hammered. This laborious process finally produced the new metal called steel. It brought fabulously high prices from Persian traders. And was taken by caravan all the way from India to the fabled city of Damascus. Damascus was renowned for the grace and beauty of its oriental dancers. But most of all, it was famed throughout the ancient world for the skill of its celebrated sword makers. Metal masters used closely guarded secrets to transform the steel from India into a superb sword. One so expensive that only wealthy warriors and princes could afford its purchase price. Only a Damascus blade would bend to the hilt and snap back without breaking. Its cutting edge was razor sharp. this fabulous sword was worth its weight in gold. For centuries, steel was made in small quantities and was used primarily for arms, swords, surgical instruments, delicate tools, and firearms. But the accumulation of knowledge is a long, slow process. It was not until the middle of the 19th century that steel was produced in large quantities in a few hours' time. The Steel Age was born. The first steel rails were rolled from a Bessemer ingot in America in 1865. Soon railroads were carrying steel tools, farm machinery, barbed wire to transform the wilderness into fertile pastures and fields of grain. century, the era of structural steel was underway, fashioning the strong and durable framework on which the United States would build its fabulous 20th century. throughout the nation convert mountains of iron ore, limestone, and coke into millions of tons of iron. The raw materials are carried to a giant blast furnace that can produce three million pounds of molten iron every 24 hours. Iron to make steel. The molten iron is
is transported to the open hearth furnace area. Limestone, iron ore, and steel scrap are charged into the open hearth furnace where they cook until the mixture is ready for the molten iron from the blast furnace. The fiery fury of the chemical reactions converts the iron to steel. The molten metal is taken in ladles by overhead crane and poured into molds. The liquid steel cools enough to become solid, leaving a red-hot ingot. Ingots are kept in underground furnaces, called soaking pits, until they are ready for rolling. The ingot moves toward giant rollers that require thousands of horsepower of electrical energy to flatten and squeeze the hot steel. of the most versatile metal known to man are rolled and formed into countless shapes to make possible our steel-made civilization. The precious metal, once laboriously made only a few pounds at a time, now is produced in such abundance that each of us is surrounded from morning until night with countless things made of steel.
While all of us live in a vast, familiar world of steel today, on drawing boards throughout the nation, designers and engineers are creating an even greater future age of steel. help to make possible the vehicle which first takes man out of his home planet. And this will be one of the most significant occurrences in man's long tenure on Earth. astronauts may be so keenly trained that they will concentrate only on operational procedures. But more likely, they will be awed by the thought that they are the first earthlings in all the annals of time who will be able to see their own world as only a tiny speck against the larger backdrop of the universe. In a sense, this moment is part of a gigantic cycle in time. Thousands of years ago, man had only his inquiring mind and the hinge of his hand to shape the metal from heaven. Now he has brought himself to the place where the same kind of metal, exquisitely refined, can carry him to outer space where the meteorites are born. Close master safety circuit breaker. Recording's on. things seem possible. Perhaps in the not too distant future, man will set about shaping his civilization on Earth as carefully as he has shaped the metal that takes him on the greatest journey in all history. The progress of man is the progress of steel.